Hello everyone and welcome to Nathrin Deer's Guide to Everything, a new YouTube channel based all around Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Uh, my name is Nathan, I'm going to be the host of the channel, I am the creator of this thing and today we're going to look at uh, creating a character. I took a poll in some of the groups I'm a part of online, a beginners group this is, on what class they would like to see a creation guide on and easily the artificer or artificer whichever you prefer i'm going to say artificer swamped all the other competition with looking for a guide to creating said character uh, so we're going to do that and the tool set we're going to be using today to do that is D, D beyond which is my preferred and chosen tool set for running my games playing characters and so on so we're going to be looking at creating an artificer and um, so let's jump into D, &D beyond Okay guys, so here we are in D&D Beyond. Uh, first, you will need to make an account um, to have access to the, the tool set that they have. So you can click sign in in the top right like I did. We're just going to do that now. So now the only thing is with an artificer, it's not part of the standard tool set. It is an add-on that has come later. So you may need to fork up a little bit of money to be able to play an artificer. So it's a good idea to have a little bit in mind of what you're thinking about playing subclass wise which might be a term you haven't heard before and um, but it just gives your character a little bit more of an identity so the artificer is its own class and a subclass is below that even so you have further options so artificer subclasses first up we have the alchemist um, which is focused on support and healing spells uh, with bonus damage for specific spell damage types next up we have the armor uh, they specialize in modifying their armor to function almost like a second skin to let you live out the Iron Man fantasy um, which I think is what I would pick if I were to play one I never have before um, you can get up close and personal as like a Hulk Buster thing and wail into things with melee attacks um, or you can turn into more of a blaster class um, which is like spell slinging from a distance um, both sound great and both of them are very Iron Man very Tony Stark third up we have uh, Artillerist um, you can summon magical cannons and blow stuff up. I think that's all you need to know about that one. It's pretty cool. And finally, Battlesmith, um, which is a combination of defender and melee attacker. You have access to spells that can smite your enemies, much like paladins, um, as well as you get some aura spells as well. Again, a lot like paladins. As well as being able to craft a steel defender to fight alongside you in battle. So it's this constructed creature that you can use to attack and defend yourself or your allies. So if you've unlocked the Artificer class, uh, you'll be able to follow this basically to a T. I'm going to pick what I would like to play and you can go about it however you like. So we're going to go to Collections, My Characters. I already have a few, but we're going to ignore those for now. We're just going to hit Create a Character, wherever that may be on your screen. Now, if you are a complete first time beginner, you have no idea what you're doing, hopefully this video will be helpful um, but if you feel like you're missing a little bit of information and you want to read more in depth because I'm going to try and not rush through this but get it done quite quickly um, you can hit show help text here and I'll turn that on for now just so you get an example of what that looks like um, and we're going to pick a standard build for a character this gives you a step-by-step -step approach so first up we're going to choose a name and some preferences this is the home screen we're going to hit randomize and we're just going to see if we can get a cool name um, crew more I quite like that um, crew more the artificer yeah sounds good let's go with that everything else we can leave a standard and we'll hit next so page one uh, this is where you choose your race um, helpful again to read this block of text this is a run through of exactly what your character may have we're gonna just hit next and here we are this is the character selection screen now I've moved over to my main account so you may see a few more races here than on yours um, but we're going to pick something that kind of fits with the theme of Artificer, I think. Um, I quite like the idea of like a gnome tinkerer. Um, in the D&D universe, gnomes are known for such things. So I think we'll go with that and we'll go with a rock gnome. Um, and out the gate, they have uh, it's an advantage to play a character with an intelligence boost um, as that's the source of all your spell abilities as an artificer and your ability to function as a class intelligence is the most important thing there 
Um, so here you can see it kind of runs through a little bit about the bonuses that picking this class gets you. So for example we have Gnome Cunning, you have advantage on all intelligence, wisdom and charisma saving throws against magic which is incredibly strong um, just as a, a racial feat, a racial ability. We have Dark Vision so we can see a little bit in the dark. Um, Artificer's Law, see it's coming in before we've even picked the class. Great, so there's another summary and we'll move on to the next page which is the class. So every party member as this says is a member of a class this broadly describes your character's job your vocation what special talents your characters have so we're gonna pick artificer artificer and it gives you a summary again of exactly what this class looks like what it does the abilities it has they are master of invention. Artificers use ingenuity and magic to unlock extraordinary capabilities in objects. Uh, we get 1d8 worth of health. And again, first time, nothing too much to worry about. D&D Beyond does all the hard work for you with all the statistics and stuff. Primary ability is intelligence. Um, so good straight out the gate. Like I said, that's why we picked a gnome, because they have that little bonus out the gate. Uh, this shows your proficiencies. Um, so what you're good at basically. Uh, you can tinker with objects as an artificer. This is one of the primary abilities that they have. Um, we have spell casting. So spell casting for artificers is a little different than other classes, um, just flavor wise. The spells function the same no matter what. You can just say I cast a fireball, it will happen. That's fine. But as an artificer it's worth thinking about trying to put a mechanical spin on it role play wise. Um, just to give your character a little bit of flavor so maybe rather than uh, casting a fireball they have a small canister of oil that they've been tinkering with and they light it so almost like a stick of dynamite instead and you can launch the stick of dynamite across the battlefield um, just to give it a little bit more flavor and perhaps if you're healing someone rather than it just being divine magic it's you quickly kind of mix up a salve to mold under someone's skin which heals them instantly a magical salve there's a lot of information about the magic here. The basics, all you need to know, you're using intelligence and after every long rest you can change which spells you have prepared. Um, so after you sleep at night you can wake up the next day and know a whole swath of new spells. So we're going to add that class. We see we're level one which is where we're going to stick to today. We can choose some proficiencies. Uh, so we have a few already. Um, all these things here are what we're proficient in already, uh, but now we can pick a few more things. So, being intelligent, we're probably going to want to go with something like investigation. That will allow us to examine objects closely and be more successful at determining their function. And I think probably Arcana, because uh, we know from picking a rock gnome that they're already, uh, they already get proficiency bonuses with history. Uh, with regards to magical objects. So um, let's go with Arcana. That lets us determine the magical properties of something. And we can pick another set of tools. Now we have a few already. Um, I'm thinking about picking Armour as my subclass. So I would probably go Smith's tools so that I have the ability to perhaps forge my own armour or alter my own armour. And here you go, here's another breakdown of magical tinkering. At first level, you learn how to invest a spark of magic into mundane objects. To use this ability, you must have thieves tools or artisans tools in hand. You must then touch a tiny non-magical object as an action and give it one of the following magical properties of your choice. And there's a list of basic magical properties. I'll let you guys go through that. And spell casting, once again, this is a very lengthy section. I would recommend reading it just so you know in more detail this is again this is a quick overview of how to create a character so we're not going to go full deep into that let's go next so abilities um, ability score this determines again like your proficiencies what your character is exceptional at basically for now I would recommend as a first time that we just go standard array which is a balanced set of statistics so we know as an artificer uh, from our previous research and what we've just made that intelligence and constitution should be our focuses. So we're going to go to intelligence and we're going to make that our highest score out the gate. 
Um, with our racial bonus of plus two from being a rock gnome, um, that brings us to a total of 17 from the 15 we just chose. Constitution should be next. Um, again, racial bonus is perfect from being a gnome, so that works out swimmingly for us. That takes us to a 15 straight out the gate. And then it's kind of as you like. Um, I have a little bit more experience. I know that dexterity will definitely help um, uh, with armor class and things like that. So we're going to go with that. Um, and then we'll go strength, I think, because an armor, I'm going to be up close and personal punching things. Um, so that's definitely going to be helpful. And then I think if I'm walking around in a suit of armor, I can't imagine I'd be very charismatic. So we're going to make that our lowest stat and then wisdom default to a 10. So we're going to be strong, dexterous, healthy, and very intelligent, uh, but not so great at talking to people. It's from inside our uh, Iron Man suit. That sounds good. Let's hit next. Uh, you, By the way, you can adjust that however you like. If you see your character as more of a charismatic person than they are strong, adjust the statistics how you like. But I would recommend if you're playing an artificer, to make sure your intelligence is your max and that your constitution is your second highest. The description section goes into more detail about character specific, so we're not going to spend too much time here. This is all for you to imagine in your mind what they might look like. I always like to start from a piece of artwork. Um, Pinterest is a great place for it. Um, or if you just have a fantastic idea in your head of what you want them to look like, be like, you can just go crazy on the section and write a huge backstory should you need. A good starting background for um, a tinkerer, someone like that, so a smithy, uh, which an artificer probably would be as their job in their downtime perhaps, um, is a guild artisan or a guild merchant. Um, so we are skilled in a particular field, in this case probably be smithing. Um, and again, you can pick, your list might be a little bit shorter than mine, but you can choose any of these, whichever you like. Um, like I said, we're going to go Guild Artisan because it kind of fits quite well. With that, we get proficiency in insight, so we can tell when someone's lying, um, and persuasion, uh, which may allow us to barter some prices, get them uh, sell things and buy things at cheaper rates perhaps, or just talk our way into an area, who knows. Uh, not super useful, uh, I can't imagine. Someone else will probably be taking over this for you, your sorcerer or your warlock. But tool proficiencies. Um, again, this is f for flavor for the most part, um, unless you have a specific thing in mind of what you want your character to be like. Um, so we can choose another proficiency. I think it would be useful if we're crafting these amazing suits of armor to perhaps be good as a leather worker, uh, maybe a jeweler. Um, I think jeweler. I like the idea of being able to imbue armor with jewels and such, make me look a little bit more regal. And languages, we also get to pick a new one. And we're a gnome. What would we encounter a lot of if we're like underground, say, I think dwarves and gnomes have a fairly good relationship. So let's go with dwarvish. Again, if you have a better idea for your backstory, choose whichever language you like. Now, as a guild member, um, we get a little background feature. So your background features are a little bit of a bonus on what you choose to be your past. Um, you can customize all this, you can throw most of it out the window if you don't like it, or keep it as it is for simplicity. Suggested characteristics, these are parts of the character that they define the character's personality, I find, and what they hold dear and what's important to them. Um, so you can randomly roll it, I always like to, um, so I don't spend too long thinking about exactly the minutiae of how they think. I just let the dice fall where they fall, and if I don't like it, I can change it. So personality traits, we're going to choose two. And like I said, I don't want to spend too long on this page, so let's just rattle through it. So we got number one. I believe anything worth doing is worth doing right. I can't help it, but I'm a perfectionist. That's that's pretty good. That works, that our armor always has to be spick and span, and we'll roll another one. I don't part with my money easily, and I will haggle tirelessly to get the best deal possible. That fits great with our guild merchant background, and we can just play that as maybe being a little bit stingy because uh, most things we'll probably be able to make for ourselves so when we have to buy something we like to get the best price now ideals let's randomly roll it uh, and we'll see what we get we got number three so my ideal is freedom everyone should be free to pursue his or her own 
livelihood. It's a bit vague. I'm trying to think of embody the mind of Tony Stark here. Um, I think freedom is good. So it's a little bit chaotic, but I don't want to control anyone. You do you. That's kind of what I get from that, and I quite like that. Cool. So we'll go next to Bonds. I got number six. Um, I will get revenge on the evil forces that destroyed my place of business and ruined my livelihood. Now that is a perfect start for a backstory. Why am I on the road in a suit of armour? Because a band of orcs destroyed, ran through my town, destroyed my shop, destroyed my livelihood, and now I've got nothing except the piece of armour that I was wearing. That's where our journey begins, maybe further down the line. That's my... That's my goal, to get revenge, get my stuff back, open a new shop, perhaps. Um, that's a great way to inspire a backstory, and that, that's fantastic. I really like that one. And then we'll go a floor. Uh, okay, the floors are always funny, but they give your character a lot of personality, I find. I'm horribly jealous of anyone who can outshine my handiwork. Everywhere I go, I'm surrounded by rivals. We'll keep all those. I like those um, suggested characteristics. And like I said, you can pick, make them up, whatever you want to do. We're just rolling now for speed. Character details. This is where you choose um, an alignment for your character. Um, I would probably stay away from evil if it's your first game. Evil is hard to play because D&D at its heart is a cooperative experience. You want everyone to have fun, including the DM. Uh, so if you're doing evil things all the time, that can kind of detract a little bit. So a neutral or good alignment in any capacity would probably be best. Um, I think Tony Stark, chaotic good. Yeah. Lifestyle, since losing my shot, I'd probably be quite poor. Um, but um, I can make magic items, probably modest. I imagine my character would sell things on the road, you know. This is where you can choose your physical characteristics. So if you have a piece of artwork ready, fantastic. You can just fill these details in. Um, if not, make it up on the spot. Just imagine in your mind what you want them to look like. I'm not going to fill this stuff in. Uh, it's not relevant right now. And notes here at the bottom, you can start off your notes for your campaign uh, by talking to your uh, dungeon master about what organizations you might be a part of what allies you may have, what enemies you may have, and a little bit of your backstory. This is all editable afterwards, so don't worry too much about it. So we have Krumor, the Guild Artisan. We'll hit next. We're almost there. Almost there. So this is where we choose our starting equipment or starting gold. So you can choose a pot of gold and then purchase your own items as you'd like to have them uh, from the inventory list. Or you can choose starting equipment, which outfits your character ready for an adventure. That's what I would recommend if it's your first time going. So here we are. So we can choose equipment or gold. We're going to choose equipment because it's much faster. Um, any two simple weapons to start out. Okay. Um, if we're up close and personal in a suit of armor, I think a couple. I want to say a couple of clubs, but I think probably a hand axe. Uh, so we've got some slashing damage. And I think a crossbow, just in case we need to get out and we can shoot from a distance. So that sounds good. Um, okay. Oh, we already get a crossbow. Well, we don't need two. Um, let's go for a spear instead, because we can chuck that. Why not? Uh, and we can go for studded leather or scale mail. Scale mail is a little bit heavier. will give you, um, make you harder to hit. Or we can go with leather. But I think the aim here is to be a tank. So let's go with the scale mail. Uh, we get out the gate, we get thieves tools and a dungeoneer's pack. Um, so we're already on our way for being a, a jack of all trades, being able to unlock doors and build things. Um, so that's a great choice. And here we did say that we picked early, if you remember, proficiency with smith's tools. So it'd be really helpful if we had a set of those out the gate. And we would, being a blacksmith, right? Um, so this is just a recommended starting set. Again, talk with your dungeon master. If they're allowing you to have a magical item to start with or anything else, uh, you can add it here or on the next screen. So we'll hit add starting equipment. This gives us some clothes and some some gold as well. And uh, you can see there is our inventory. And what we'll do is we'll hit next. And that's it. We're done. You made a character. Um, and on the next screen, you'll see what it looks like all put together. You can also take a look at a PDF. Now, if you just needed this quickly, you just need to print something out to take to a game in person. This is amazing. You can just click on export PDF. 
download that. I'll open that up for you. And you can see, there it is. There's your character sheet already filled in with everything you need to start playing D&D in person. Uh, it looks quite confusing on here. I think D&D Beyond's layout digitally is a little better. Um, so let's look at that. So here we are. Welcome to the D&D Beyond character sheet. As you can see, we've got our statistics along the top. Our proficiency bonus, which changes with your level as you get more proficient at doing things. Uh, how fast we can move. Uh, we have our hit points in the top right, some resistances if we need to add them in here. Uh, you can add conditions um, if you become incapacitated. Uh, it will adjust your stats accordingly. Um, you can see your skills in the center down this column. And the best thing about D&D Beyond is if you're bad at maths like me, you no longer need to do it in your head. You can just click. I'm investigating something. The dice rolled off the screen for you guys, but I assure you it was a 23. Smashed it. If you're wondering why the browser looks weird, it's because I have a widescreen monitor, um, so you're only seeing the central portion. Um, but uh, as I was saying, uh, you've got your saving throws in the top left here. So often your dungeon master, if someone's throwing a fireball at you, will call for a dexterity saving throw, things like that. Um, this is your resistance against spells. Um, and if we go to the equipment tab on the right here, we can start to equip all of our bits and bobs. So we've got a crossbow, hand axe, scale mail which jumps our armor class from if you see that there from 11 all the way up to 15 but as you can see down here it does give us disadvantage on stealth checks so we're going to be rattling around as we move and so this is it we have all our gear equipped if we want to chuck our spear at something or stab someone with it we can roll that there and again it's rolled off the screen i got a five i'm not hitting much with a five i'll be honest with you but you can roll damage from here as well um, for your weapons and such um, you can see so this magical tinkering feature we were talking about earlier in this actions tab tells you what you can do as an action it's very straightforward it gives you kind of a abbreviation of what you can do with it or you can just click on it and you'll get a window slide over to the right over here and it gives you much more detail about what that might be so we'll close that for now uh, we need we do need to look at our spells because we are a spellcaster um, so I'm going to do a quick run through of that. You can see at the moment we've got zero prepared spells uh, because we haven't decided to learn any yet. You open up this and you can see the big long list of spells. Again, you might have slightly different ones to me because I've purchased some extra books. But regardless, I'll try and keep it simple. We can learn two cantrips. Cantrips are spells you can cast an unlimited amount of times. Um, cantrips are free. They don't cost anything for you. So if I sort by just cantrips by clicking this little zero, we can learn two. So let's pick two. Um, I like the idea of being able to summon a light. That's useful. Uh, if you're traveling with some humans who don't have dark vision, they can't see in the dark light, you can. Having a light handy may help massively. And I would probably envision this on my artificer as rather than summoning a ball of light in my hand, Perhaps I've got a little wind-up torch that I can just release and it flies on its own, maybe hovers down a corridor next to me, and that's a light spell. Um, and we'll also pick Create Bonfire. That has a casting time of one action, so it takes one action to cast. Uh, a range of 60 feet, so I can throw this thing pretty far, um, and it makes a five-foot cube area of fire. And you can see all the details of the spells along here as well. You can see here as well all statistics for your spell, um, anything you need for your spells are all here. So we have a plus three for our modifier, uh, plus five to our spell attack, um, and a 13 save DC. At the moment both of our spells require saves from the targeted creature, um, so we'll try and pick something different for our level one spell so I can show you. Let's go with catapult, that sounds pretty fun. Um, I think we may need to do some healing. Um, it would be helpful for ourselves and for other people. So we'll, we'll hit a cure wounds, I think. That would be useful to have. And I would love, I think, to be able to jump further. We can attach little rocket boots to our, to our armor and we can jump a bit further with the jump spell. We have five spells chosen, which is as many as we can have, as I show you here again. Uh, cantrips two, prepared spells three. So we have three first level spells and two cantrips prepared and every day every time your character sleeps you can change these so unlimited options 
So there we are. That is an artificer. Artificer. I, I need to stop saying that. It's artificer to me. That's it. End of. I'm never going to call it anything else ever again. Um, and this is Crewmore, my rock gnome artificer. Um, he's ready to play, and hopefully you are too. If you have a game lined up and you weren't sure, now you can play. You have a level one character. Well done. Um, we know a little bit about how they work, um, and everything else you need is along all of these little tabs, these extras here. But for a level one character in the first game, don't worry about that. Just enjoy D and D. I know you will, but that's it. I will definitely make a follow-up video to this one, leveling up Crewmore here, um, so you guys can see how the character will evolve over time and how specialised they can be. But that's it. This was Nathan Deer's Guide to Everything. My name is Nathan. Um, if you enjoyed it, please leave a like and a comment. I'm sure that all helps with the YouTube algorithm everyone talks about these days. Um, but yeah, see you in the next one.